Working together with the family is always hard. Every day is not like smiling each other. We were ready to, you know, slap each other. <laughs> like we want to say things, but we don't because we love this person so much. You respect this person and we know how hard it is. Only two of us knew that. Do you think but that's the thing that you learn about working together? <laughs> Patel. I am the owner and chef at my restaurant, Besharam, situated in a dock patch, San Francisco. I work for uh, chef owner Hina Patel at Besharam. I run the front of the house for her. We have two children, <laughs> an older daughter in her 30s and a younger son in his mid-20s. What is Besharam? That's a very deep question. <laughs> it's the journey of my life. It's a live performance every day. I have an open kitchen, so I get zitters, like, oh, I want to do my best. And that doesn't go away every day. So Besharam is me. Besharam serves Indian food, but more specifically, regional Gujarati food um, from the state of Gujarat, where we're all from. I think different than Indian food, like Gujarati people eat sweet and spicy at the same time. We don't do courses, we do everything together. There is a gap of what Gujarati food has been represented. I wanted to be true to myself and talk my emotions through my food. Food is the connector, food is the language, what I couldn't speak right when I landed in this. And connecting with people, that was all transferred into this space. The food you crave, that's the food I want to create. I want you to miss my food. In my dream, there is a line outside the door. I'm very cocky about my food. <laughs> With the open kitchen is the added pressure because I want to make sure even me, but all my staff has to be putting the performance right or doing the right way right. And the good side, I can see the guests trying my food. I can see their expression when the first bite goes in the mouth and whether they like my dish and I look for those uh, little spark in their eyes. And the green garlic, it's only in season for a couple of months, so I take full advantage of it. I love the fresh mint in my khichdi. This humble dish with the humble ingredients needs more shout out. Needs the place in my menu because the pleasure of eating, you just feel like you're satisfied. End of the meal with this dish, it just takes you back home. And this is khichdi, the rice, and our moong dal cooked to its perfection. Topped with some cumin, curry leaves, salt, chili and garlic, and green garlic. Curry is a yogurt spice sauce, tempered with ghee, bay leaf, cardamom, cinnamon, whole cloves, if you just pour over the khichdi and take that bite, that's the bite in heaven. Besharam means shameless. Like how I ask myself, am I Besharam enough? But I'm a hustler. <laughs> I never give up. And the Besharam name comes through what the experience I have done throughout my life. I felt like uh, the first 20 or 30 years of my life, I done what was expected of me. What's the path already laid out? I didn't have language or voice or even other path or, or argue about it because I didn't question anything. I'm the second daughter and we are five sisters. I grew up between uh, Gujarat and Mumbai. I was born in, um, in Africa, in Uganda. And then thanks to Idi Amin and the political times, we were forced to immigrate to England. We got married in 86. Family is always, has always been involved in so many different cultures when it comes to marriage. When me and Hina got married, yes, it was the only part that was arranged for us was our meeting, our first meeting. It feels wild and to know him in two weeks and we decided to get married. So that's felt wild <laughs> now. <laughs> but at the time, I was having fun. I moved from India to London. 
me living in India is the dream I'm fulfilling of my dad. He left his village and he went to Mumbai in a dream of leaving India for good. But it didn't happen for him. We are the byproducts of living his dream. After our daughter was born. We moved from London to United States, landed in San Francisco, never left. We've always worked together in retail. Uh, the business that we had uh, originally was um, a liquor store. And the unique thing about this business was that it had a big enough space that there was a flower shop attached to it. And so that meant that we were both going to be running two businesses side by side and what it would take. You know, we ran it for over 20 years. Our beginning of the, our marriage was always working. Whatever time we get is to eat together behind the counter in a back room. But that was special. We knew what's lying back home, back London, back India. It's not like, okay, if we don't want to do this, what are our options? So options were not great. <laughs> so what you do, you try to find the life what it's in front of you. We haven't even mentioned like the odd end jobs in between all of these yeah. careers yes. that they worked. There are plenty. There, there are plenty. plenty. Double jobs, working two jobs, three jobs. Yeah. Carving meat at Roast House. Henna design at like weddings and things like that. Sears, selling vacuums and mattresses or appliances. My dad, you know, he, when he was in his late 20s, early 30s, he worked at a printing press. And my mom had a degree in child psychology. My dad was a driving instructor in London. Yeah. There's more. There's, there, definitely, there's more. definitely more. Um, I mean, mom did Pete's Coffee for like a hot week. Pete's, Pete's Coffee. <laughs> They're entrepreneurs. They're the definition of they Bay really Area entrepreneurs. can't help it. <laughs> 2012, we sold a liquor store. And that's when we started working on the La Cucina application for mom. La Cucina is an, an incubator program in San Francisco for migrant women to take their culinary skills, home-based culinary skills, and turn them into a viable business that would not only support them, but their families, give them the ability to be successful migrants in, in, in San Francisco. She had the opportunity to come into this space as an executive chef, through which she changed it to being owner-operator chef. That has been uh, a very fulfilling part of this family's life story so far. It's the first time we are so independent of what we want to do as an as a owner. Having our own idea without any inhibitions or without... Yeah. La Cucina is the place where they celebrated uh, my food. That's the first place uh, I've been encouraged to cook more regional food. And I don't have to explain what pav bhaji. I don't have to say it's a sloppy veggie burger or anything to make them understand. They made me excited of who I am. Cooking in my sari? Yes, why not? Having a tikka on my forehead? Of course, that's what you are. I'm proud to say this business is born at La Cocina. Today is Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning, the day before Valentine. And this is my time with my children and my husband. Stress-free, laid out, very easy breakfast. Usually we try to do once a week. And that's the only time we have when we gather and relax. Our breakfast is half, it's like weirdly British, Indian, and American all at the same time. Sunday morning usually we have breakfast around the table at home, but we are in the middle of move and we staging our house. House is a mess, <laughs> so we decided to have um, at our second home, which is my Besharam restaurant. <laughs> when we had like the liquor store and then someone from like 96.5 came, and they started yes. talking and mom was like, wait. <laughs> Your voice. <laughs> I know you. Oh my God. That's famous, but I is it? I see Clint Eastwood at Roast House. Clint Eastwood, yeah. I mean, that's Clint, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is famous. Yeah. And then you're like, I, I saw Clint see Eastwood. I did the newspaper, I mean the 96.5 or something. Yeah, and what I about that? Name. Famous? The biggest job I've always felt raising kids especially of an ethnic background in the West, has been to give them 
the confidence to say no. And what I mean by that is that not to have peer pressure rule their lives. It is interesting that my dad decided to talk to you about wanting to instill in Uncle and I the ability and the confidence to say no. I don't think they had the ability to say no a lot. I've never heard him say that before. Um, I'm sure that's like a, not ability, but just um, opportunity to say no. Like, that's what it is, right? We had the opportunity to say, I don't need to work, I don't need to work for, for like every check. I don't need to be on my feet for 14 hours. And like that opportunity, it's not given to them. Um, but we have it. And the confidence, I think. I do. <laughs> I certainly do. I'm an attorney, overruns an education department at the film, like, um, I think they, they, they wanted us to go do our careers. Yeah, that's sweet. That's so sweet. This is the celebration time for me. It took me 56 years to get here. I'm celebrating this time to talk about, of course, my life, but there's so much help happened during those years. I think the thing I'm most proud of is that we've been able to sustain like an actual relationship with each other and not like an employee manager relationship. I remember thinking when we were younger, I think I've said this to you before, that like, wow, our family would be so much happier if we weren't all so sleep deprived. <laughs> and like we have fights and I think it's only because we're sleep deprived because we really like each other as people. We really like each other. I remember growing up and being like, you mean your parents don't work together all day? They go to like different jobs and you all only hang out at dinner time? What are you talking about? My parents are together all the time. I just thought it was normal. It was like not for sure that we would be able to like come out here say, look at how shameless we are. It's like a really dangerous place to be, I feel like. And yeah. so in some ways, it's something I'm like trying to embody more. But our parents do it, I think, like no other. Mm -hmm.